Hey students, it is Miss Wensloff. Today I'm going to be talking about 2D motion. It's really important that before you do this lesson, you really understand how to use the kinematic equations and how to do 1D motion. If that's something you're still struggling with, I would recommend going back in my flipped lesson and reviewing before this lesson. Let's dive in. There are two different types of projectiles that we'll talk about. The first one is something is launched horizontally only. So you'll see in this picture that this object is launched only to the right, okay? And we'll see that it falls all the way to the ground. The second situation we're gonna see is something is launched at an angle, it goes up and comes back down, okay? So we have this parabola, then we have half a parabola situation. Now there are a lot of different pieces of this that if we really understand the different components of X and Y, X and y we're gonna understand this a lot better. We definitely have some rules here when we talk about something that's launched. So if I look at this example, let's say that I'm firing something to the right and it is going to make a nice half parabola to the ground. Let's think about a few different things. First of all, I have a velocity in the x direction. However, I have no velocity in the y direction. Why? It's only being launched to the right. Acceleration. In the x direction, I don't have gravity or anything, so it's zero. But in the y direction, as we saw before in 1D motion, I will have acceleration, and that's gravity. Remember, it's still negative. It is still pulling it downwards. Then I have my time. My time is always the same in the x and y. And that's in every single situation we're ever going to have in physics. I'm going to start showing you a technique of how to solve these problems, how to read them, and how to write them out fully. Let's just dive in. When I'm looking at 2D projectiles, the first thing I need to do is read the problem, underline, okay? And then I need to identify my variables. Now when I do this, I don't just write them all out. I'm going to separate them into a t-chart. This t-chart is going to have everything in the x direction and everything in the y direction. This technique is going to help you not only in this unit, but in future units when we talk, still are talking about 2D motion. Then we're going to solve separately in the x and the y direction. Remember, the only thing that they share is time. Let's try it out. Our first type of projectile motion problem are horizontally only being launched. So a pool ball leaves a 0.6 meter high table with an initial velocity of 2.4 meters per second. It predicts the time required for the pool ball to fall to the ground and the horizontal distance between the table's edge and the ball's landing location. When I start a problem like this, I always need to draw it out. So I launch this ball and it's gonna make a nice little projectile down to the bottom. <clears throat> I'm given a few variables here. My initial velocity is 2.4 meters per second, and my displacement here is 0 0.6 meters. Now it's going down, so this number is negative. All right, so I, draw, I drew it out. Now it's time for me to make my x and y chart, which is gonna help me solve for my unknown variables. In my x direction, I'm given my initial velocity, and then not really given anything else, but it's good to write down that my acceleration is zero. Uh, what else do I know? Well, nothing else, but I am looking for my delta x and my time. For my y, I know a few things. My velocity initial is zero. It's only being launched horizontally. My acceleration is negative 9.8 meters per second squared. And finally, my delta y is negative 0.6 meters. What can I find in this side? Time. As a reminder, time is always the same in the x and y. So once I find time on one side, I'm going to use it on the other side. Now the question is, what side do I solve for first? Well, I have to use the y side. Why? Because, well, I have three variables and then one unknown variable. Take a look at your equation sheet and look at which one I should use. I'm going to use my second equation. So delta y 
equals vit plus one half a t squared. I can get rid of this vit off the bat. And then I will be solving, rearranging my equation for t. I'm gonna skip those steps there, but that is something you should be writing out. So at this point, I can plug in my numbers and I'm going to emphasize why it is so important that this is negative. If this wasn't negative 0.6 meters, I would get a square root over a negative, which wouldn't really make much sense and is definitely an illegal math move. So if you're ever getting that answer, you may want to stop and ask yourself, what did I label incorrectly? So my time, I'm going to get 0 0.35 seconds. So now that is my time in both directions. Now if I look at my x side, I don't have any acceleration. The only equation I can use is velocity equals my displacement over time. Why? I have no acceleration. You can also derive this from my, my second kinematic equation, but it's just something you need to know. No acceleration, I can only use this equation. I can rearrange this to solve for delta x. Okay. And then I am going to get my velocity. And you'll see I'm also writing out my units. My velocity times my time. And for my answer, I'm going to get 0 0.84 meters. This is a full problem, right? I'm showing all my equations, I'm showing all my work, okay? The biggest thing I wanna emphasize is your X and Y chart. If you try to write this out all in one, it's gonna be really, really difficult to figure out what is on the X, what is on the Y. Let's move on to our second type. Our second type of problem here is if something is launched at an angle, okay? So let's say somebody's being launched at three meters per second at an angle. Now at this point, I do have a velocity in the X and Y direction, okay? So my velocity is not three meters per second. It is the X component of my given velocity. And in my Y direction, it's gonna be the Y component. So the reason we've worked so hard on vectors is because I have to break it up. My acceleration is still zero in the x, and now it is negative 9.8 still, gravity in my y. My time is the same in both directions. Now I wanna note delta x. So I have a delta x for this. I'm gonna put a little yes, I have one. But my delta y, let's think about this. This thing is traveling up and then back down to the ground, which means my delta y is zero. All these factors are going to help us make solving one of these problems a lot easier. Let's try it out. Let's try a, a problem at something launched at an angle. I'm going to give you a little bit more insight on how to set up a problem in this, a little more than I did in the previous slide. A football is kicked with an initial velocity of 25 meters per second at a 35 degree angle. Determine the time of the flight and the horizontal displacement. If I draw this out, some things launch at 25 meters per second at a 30 degree angle. My first thought here is that this is launched and it comes back down to the same plane. And I also have an X and Y component of velocity. What is that? It's 25 cosine 30 adjacent and 25 sine 30. I recommend breaking this up to start because it's gonna really help us uh, stop with our confusion <laughs> as we go into our next portion, okay? So now I'm gonna work on my X and Y chart, okay? I know both of my initial velocities, and in this case, I do have a velocity initial in the Y because it's launched at an angle. My velocity initial in the X is 25 cosine 30, and the Y is 25 sine 30. Now, something I like to point out is that my velocity final in the x is also the same thing, okay? Why? Because my acceleration is zero. Honestly, I don't really write this much of the time because it gets confusing. But for my velocity final in my y, this thing is coming up and coming back down, 
which means my final velocity is the opposite. If you go back to 1D motion, when we look at something that is thrown in the vertical, we have the same exact property. My acceleration in the Y is negative 9.8 meters per second squared. My delta Y, this thing's coming up and coming back down, it's zero. What else am I looking for? I'm looking for time, and I'm also looking for delta X. Now we need to ask ourselves, which equation am I going to use? Well, this is when we get into, well, we could do it two different ways, but there's an easier way. First, I want to solve for time. Now, technically, I could use my second equation, but I'm going to tell you why it's probably not the best idea for you. Velocity ish initial is a number in here, okay? So we're going to get this situation. We have two t's. We're going to have to pull stuff out. Sometimes we get a little confused. So we're not going to be using that equation, okay? I'm going to be using my third equation. Why? Well, I have velocity final equals velocity initial plus a t. So actually that's my first equation on my equation sheet, not my third, okay? Now I'm solving for time, so I'm going to rearrange for time. Okay, then I can plug in. This is the moment where our direction really matters. I have negative 25 sine 30 minus 25 sine 30 over negative 9.8. Now what this technically means is that this is two, so negative two of this 25 sine 30 degrees, okay? Um, and then when I do the math here, I'm gonna 2.55 seconds for my time. Now as we know, in my x and my y direction, time is always the same. Remember, in my x direction, I have no acceleration, so that means the only equation I can use is my velocity equation, okay? Now this is technically um, our second equation on our equation sheet, but I'll just like to say memorize it like this. So now I'm solving for delta x. I'm going to rearrange for that. So I have my initial velocity. Remember, that's 25 cosine 30. It's not 25. I will tell you that is the number one mistake that I see students make in here. Um, we've got to make sure we break up that variable. So I'm going to get my answer for my delta x is 55 meters, approximately half a football field. Now, I covered both of our different types of problems, um, and that is horizontally only and at an angle. What we're going to go over in class is when something is launched at an angle, at our max height, what is going on? And it's really what's going on in a vertical only problem, but we're going to go over how to do this. Thanks for listening and bring any questions you have to class.